Hi, people. Right. Um, and uh, German Shepherd Man's video, I, uh, I replied to someone who was asking about how do you know if it's a good breeder and, you know, what questions do you need to ask when you're buying a puppy. So I thought I'm just going to go through this as said to sleep and soaking wet. I'm soaking wet. We were training in the pouring rain today and my jeans are stuck to me. It's absolutely disgusting. I mean, these hoodies are ringing wet. But still, never mind. When I've got a cold, people, you'll know why. God, I was wondering when I saw it. It's really uncomfortable. Still, I've only got two hoodies, so that's life. Okay, so puppies. Obviously, in today's day and age, let's get this sorted out a little bit. You've, you, stop it. You've got to be careful. You know, it's really important that, one, you go and see the puppies, you know, um, with the dam or the mother. And you want to see those puppies feeding off the mother. OK, you know, especially if you've got no experience with puppies and, and lactating bitches, you know, is it. You can't miss a lactating bitch that their teats are very swollen and um you know leaking milk you, you can't be fooled into someone saying oh well this is the the pup's mother when the pups are about five weeks old and she's got no swollen teeth you know that's obviously not the mother then is it you know what i mean questions you need to ask are have the parents been hip scored elbow scored and any breed specific testing done if yes ask to see the paperwork and find out the vet who did the testing. If you're still worried, contact the vet and ask, did they do the testing? Because veterinary paperwork can be forged, okay? I, it's a horrible world we live in, people, but this is the reality. So after you've been and seen your pup and you've chose your pup and you've put a deposit on it, you want to go back and see it as many times as you like. Now, one thing I really don't like, okay, is a breeder that says, we'll deliver your puppy. No, 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 no. Absolutely not, okay? You've got to go. You're going to have to travel. Go and get your puppy, okay? Go and get your puppy. Decent breeders will have a return policy, a contract drawn up that you have to sign. You know, so, I mean, not all breeders do. A good breeder will. I didn't sign a contract with Zed. I mean, bottom line is she, I, I, she just bred her, her bitch and wanted to make money out of it that's simple as that that's why I had so many problems with said but you know I, I've got her international sheepdog um, registry papers so I know her bloodline and that her um, her dam was um, tested for collie eye anomaly her dam was not hip scored or elbow scored okay but that was my choice um so also it, it's so important i think that you ask what the puppy's routine is so that when you bring your puppy home f for a little while and i do mean a little while just whilst the puppy settles in you try and match that routine and then slowly slowly change the routine to what you want you know so the puppy feels more comfortable because you know it's a huge thing for a puppy to leave its its pack mates, its litter mates, and to leave its dam. I I like to see the the sire if possible. Um, I saw photos of said sire. Um, you know, obviously working dogs, but you know, a decent breeder will show you both sire and dam, or mum and dad, if you like. And, you know, another question was, how do you know if someone's a backstreet breeder or a puppy farmer? Well, you go to the place of breeding. Don't go to some setup where it's a house and they've got puppies there and there's no adult dogs there. That is the, that's the biggest scam going. That's puppy farm dogs that have been, you know, over in England, they've been imported from Ireland and you know it it's awful it, it it it's really awful and uh you know laws need to stop it i really really want to emphasize do not have any puppy delivered you don't even know if it'll be the puppy you've chosen what do you do then then you know i know in america things are slightly different okay but over here in the uk it is a number one thing you go and see 
the puppy several times before you pick it up at seven and a half, eight weeks old. It by law it has to be eight weeks old here, but you know, there's ways around that. You know, who's going to enforce it anyway? Um, so you know, I hope this helps a bit. It, it's very, very important that you do research a breeder. I mean, any decent breeder, you know, you type in the the breeder's name on the computer and it will come up. Um, another way around this is you can get in touch. You know. In the UK with the Kennel Club, in America with the American Kennel Club, and they will have assured breeders. And, you know, you can go that route. I just think you've got to be careful. You know, it, it's. Anybody, any advert, any advert that you read that says, oh, we'll send the puppy. That's a scam. Ignore it. Find another puppy. And and also, don't be afraid to walk away from a litter. If you don't find the puppy you like in that litter, walk away. Don't, you know, people are so sucked in with this cutesy thing of, oh, puppies, puppy, puppies. I don't suffer from that. I mean, before I got said, I walked away from a litter because I could see the mother was not a pure border collie. I could see she was a hunt away cross border collie, even though they were selling those pups as pure border collies. But, OK, I've got decades of experience and I've bought a lot of puppies. But, you know, at the end of the day, you've got it's common sense, people. It really is. You, you've got to ask lots of questions and, and, you know, expect the breeder to ask lots of questions of you. A good breeder will want to know that their pups are going to a good home. And I'm going to be honest, there's not enough of that. I mean, was I asked any questions when I went to get Zed? No, none. So she didn't care where her pups were going. And also a good breeder will not will never, ever sell two pups out of a litter to the same person. It's a complete no-no. You know, one pup's hard enough. You know, you put two pups, you buy two pups of the same age out of the same litter, you're going to be absolutely of no interest because the pups will have, have each other. They've got nothing to look to you to for. You know, for playtime, they've got each other. And then you're going to have to separate them to train them. And it, it's just 10 times, 100 times more work. OK, so, you know, if you've got any more questions on this, look, please put them down in the comments. OK, and once again, I will say I hold the comments for a review. OK, I do let all comments through unless it's trolling or spam or just stupid. OK, so please don't think I just put through the comments that I approve of because that is not the case okay it just simply isn't so I hope this is some help help to you also obviously you're going to need to know what they're, they're eating whether you agree with what they're eating or not you're going to have to slowly over a period you know if it's kibble or wet food you're going to have to do 10% over a period of 10 days to change the food don't overfeed your puppy. I'm guilty as hell of doing it. I think poor puppy's hungry. You know what I mean? Mm. All that does is make the pup grow too quickly and then you can cause problems. And um, it's a big fault of mine. I always think they're so hungry. You know what I mean? Well, I said it's always been a hungry dog. She still is. Um, so, you know, my preference is for raw feeding. But and, and, you know, rule of thumb is don't mix the two. Certainly not in the same meal. Um, because of digestive rates, they digest at a very different rate. So, you know, ask questions and expect to be really asked a lot of questions. A good breeder will want to know that their pups are going to a good home. OK, it, it's, it's just so important. I mean, you also want to know that the breeder you're buying from is at the end of a phone if you've got any problems, um, you know, to help you through um especially for first-time puppy owners and and you know if you are a first-time puppy owner please don't go for working breeds like border collies malinois german shepherds it's, it's just not the right type of dog to have for a first-time dog owner it just isn't you know high drive working breeds are not for first-time dog owners okay take it from someone who knows um i mean said to put 10 years on me bless her i love her to death but she has and, um, you know, she has a lot of work. She always will be. But, you know, that is what you take on when you when you are purchasing a puppy, you are making commitment to fulfill all that dog's needs as it grows. You shape the puppy into what. And remember, whatever you teach a puppy, you have to live with for the entirety of that dog's life. Yes, you can correct things to a point. 
But if your dog is like said, she remembers everything that I've taught her. And it doesn't matter if we don't practice it for months, she still remembers it. So be aware of, you know, all of what I've said here. And please, please remember, you know, you are, it, it's as much commitment, if not more, than having a child. Okay, because eventually you can talk in the same language to a kid as it grows. And dogs, you know, I, you know, people say dogs don't understand words. Yes, they do. And, um, you know, said dogs also learn a lot from watching you, puppies watching you, what you're doing. And also, you know, when you've got a new puppy, it's so important that you're confident so that the puppy feels safe. You've got to be matter of fact, in control, know what you're doing, you know. Puppy proof your your house if you're not going to crate train, okay. And I, now with some with Finland they've banned crates. You know, <clears throat> I'm not into this ban and everything. You know, pretty soon it's going to be impossible to own a dog because you won't be able to do anything with it. You know, I am not a purely positive dog trainer, and the purely positive brigade are just making it ridiculous. I'm sorry to anybody who's a purely positive trainer, but I know from experience that it does not work it may work with a really submissive compliant dog that will do you know that will cower at the word no you know what i mean it, it will um it, it, you just got to be realistic with it i mean you wouldn't raise a child and and ignore it walking into the road would you you just wouldn't so why why all this ignore bad behavior in in puppies and praise the good behavior now, regards crates, going back to that, I don't use a crate. I've got nothing against them at all. I just don't happen to have one. But I've got a very small kitchen. Now, if you've got a larger kitchen, you can gate off an area, okay? So the dog knows that that's its area. So, okay, that's the way round the, the crate ban. Just use baby gates and gate off an area, okay? That's the, that's the way around that. You know, I, I'm on I'm on the same page as Robert Robert Cabral. It, it's absolutely ridiculous all this banning stuff. Okay, it, you know, they can ban what they like over here, but I'm still going to carry on doing what I do the way I do it because it, it's what keeps safe Zed safe and what works. You know, it is what it is. So anyway, on the puppy subject, do your research, please. Plenty of visits to see that puppy, and. Pick it up yourself. If it means in America you have to get on a plane, you have to go and get it, and then you have to come back rather than having it sent, please do that. Please do that. You know, stay in, in contact. Phone up. I mean, after I went and saw Zed the first time, I was ringing up all the time. How's she doing? How's she doing? How's she doing? What's she doing? Who's she bullying? Who's she biting? All the rest of it, because Zed was biting everybody before I even got her. And, um, you know, just be sensible. It's so easy to get sucked in, especially, I don't know why people suffer from this puppy cutesy thing. You know, it's just a baby animal, okay? I mean, it's like I had a bird fly in here the other day. You know, Zed came, it was like this, all this loud twittering on the uh, in the kitchen, and Zed looked at me, and she came and sat next to me on the sofa, and then the little fledgling flew into the living room and landed, and, and it was... Um, yeah, I just went and scooped it up. No fuss. I made Zed stay in and I just went out and popped it on the fence. But, you know, I learnt from Zed that she will not hurt a baby animal. I have been very strict with her about chasing any kind of animal. I won't have it. She can do what she likes with people. I'm not bothered. I mean, at the moment, I'm doing some work with her protection about her going forward. But, you know, she, um, yeah, well... I need a damn good decoy, but, you know, who's going to put their hand up to do that for me? I mean, I'm not saying anybody's going to get bit. You might get nibbled on, but, you know, it's not that bad. I've been bitten hundreds of times. So, um, anyway, that's what this is about. It's, it's about puppy safety, buying puppies safely. And, be, you know, if they don't ask you any questions, be concerned. In fact, I'll say, why aren't you asking me any questions? You know, why aren't you, you know, why is there no contract? You're going to pay more for a puppy that has had hip scores, elbow scores and breed spe specific testing. You will pay more. But be sensible because without all the testing, you're going to be paying loads at the vets. OK, loads. And whilst I'm just talking about puppies here. 
To my absolute horror, I have found out the latest thing in designer dogs over here. Because people that buy Huskies want, want obedience, they're now mixing them with Border Collies. And I cannot think of a worse cross going. I mean, Collies can be neurotic. and I mean, Zed's not neurotic because she I spend 11 hours a day fulfilling her needs. You know, if it's not training, it, it's agility. If it's not agility, it's trick work. If it's not that, it's something else. You know, we've got grooming, teeth cleaning, nails claws everything and it has to be done every day if you don't have the time to commit to a puppy and commit fully don't have a puppy okay it is that simple it's not about what just what we want it's very easy to be selfish you know it's about what is right and good for the puppy as well you know, the, the, that puppy that's going to grow into a dog, and, and please remember, dogs are not mature until they're two, you know. So if you use crates or, in my case, a gated kitchen, then, you know, Zed was in the kitchen till she was 17 months old. And the only reason that she came out early was because of YY passing. And when YY's ashes came home in her little beach box, Zed, and I said to Zed, this is Auntie YY now. Said insisted on coming out of the kitchen. She'd have jumped the gate anyway. So you know, and you know, she's chewed nothing. If you if if you start them off right, you'll have a great puppy that grows into a wonderful dog, like I have with Zed. But don't kid yourself. Zed was a hard year. For the first year with her was extremely difficult because she's strong-willed and she's stubborn. You mix that with a husky and, oh, my God, you're going to have a problem. It's not the way to go, people out there with huskies. It's not. I'm sorry. You know, if you're going to crossbreed, it, I have no problems if it's within category, if you like, or genre. You know, breeding, I have no problems with breeding a, you know, the, the, the herding dogs to another herding dog, i.e., you know, a, a border collie you know, the shepherd dogs, like a Belgian shepherd to a German shepherd or, or whatever, you know, or a cocker spaniel to a springer spaniel, you know, keep it within the group. Stop mixing everything with poodles. And, and I, I refuse to say it, you know, anything that's crossed with a, boo a poodle or all these design dogs, they are crossbreds at best, mongrels mostly. OK, if it's two dogs, it's a crossbred. If there's more than two breeds in there, it's a mongrel. It's a mutt. OK, that's it. Nothing wrong with a mutt. You know, they can be very healthy mutts. But unfortunately, these designer breeds, you know, they're being bred and they're being castrated, neutered and spayed at six to eight weeks of age before they're sold. So that's usually six weeks so that they can heal before they're sold. That just leaves you with an immature dog for the entirety of its life, and that is cruel. Overfeeding is cruel. You do not want a fat dog. It, it's too much strain. So, you know, don't be killing with kindness. And, and you know, it's like my next door neighbour, OK? They got rescue dog. It, it's so fat. What do they do with it? Nothing. The dog is so unmentally stimulated. And please remember, it's not about just taking a dog out for a walk and putting water down and feeding it. No, 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 no. Or, or just playing ball with it on the park. That's not enough either. They need mental stimulation, which means training. And, you know, I've said this. Do teach your dog some tricks so that they use this. You know, teaching your dog a new trick, OK, is, is more tiring than a 45 minute walk would be. Mental stimulation is very important for puppies. I hope this is some help to everybody. And I'm sorry it's a long video. Please take care now. All right. Bye. I've got to find out how to turn this off.